Good evening, everybody. It is race time as we prepare for the Feed NC 150 presented by Atori Racing Enterprises. 110 laps at the Lady in Black, the track too tough to tame. This is Darlington Raceway. Seth Cole here alongside of Samuel Dyer, who's been a, a regular commentator here for Flat Out Racing Network. And uh, Sam, I mean, 110 laps. These guys are going to have to pace themselves. Yeah, it's going to be a long track, and it's obviously going to be tricky. I think the hardest thing is going to be keeping the tires as well as you can and also keeping a car off the wall. We are also very privileged to have here tonight in the commentator's booth with us a writer for Sprint Car and Midget as well as Speed Sport, Jacob Seelman. I mean, Jacob, I've, this is the first time you're here with us, but it's Darlington. It's an event that's being put on by Hattori Racing Enterprises, and glad to have you with us. Thank you, Seth. Glad to be here uh, and definitely glad to Josh Weinrich and all the folks at Hattori Racing Enterprises for giving me the call up for this one. Uh, definitely been um, decently tight with them uh, through the Truck Series and the NASCAR Xfinity Series over the last couple of years. Uh, been fun to watch their drivers come up through the ranks and obviously tonight a really good cause with Feed NC uh, being on board and this being a really cool charitable initiative that they've started. The second one that they've done in the last couple of weeks, like I said, just really privileged to be a part of it. Glad to be a part of the FRN booth tonight. Yeah, we are definitely glad to have you with us and obviously very grateful as well to uh, Hattori Racing Enterprises for reaching out to us to have us do the broadcast here for them tonight as the field is getting ready to grid here. And let's take a look at the starting lineup on the pole position is going to be the number 80 of Tommy Gossett. And he's going to be starting alongside of the number 84 of Josh Weinrich and uh, Jacob, you have some information about Weinrich coming into this race. Well, of course, Josh is not only the spearhead of this event, also the uh, main PR contact for all of Hattori Racing Enterprises teams from the Xfinity Series to the Truck Series and as well as the Arkham Menard Series East. So uh, Josh, certainly uh, the organizer and uh, the, the main man in charge, so to speak, uh, taking that 84 from the outside pole here this evening. Uh, Shane Terrian on the inside of row number two alongside one of the Hattori Racing Enterprises drivers repping for the Arkham Menard Series. Series East is Mad Max, Max McLaughlin, and then uh, Chris Owens also starting up among the top five, uh, works with World Racing Group and the World of Outlaws behind the scenes on the website, and a pretty talented photographer on the NASCAR side as well, starting fifth. And we got a lot of guys starting in mid-pack to the rear of the field. What's their strategy right now, especially early on? Do they go hard based on the fact everyone's going to be bunched up here? on this initial start or do they wait and try and save their tires make a charge later on if we get into a long green flag run Seth, this is Darlington. I think we all know on this sim, it's just about survival here, whether you're starting at the front or at the back. I'm looking at a guy like uh, Kevin Bellacourt, uh, who currently uh, works in the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series, as well as a past champion in the Arca Menard Series East. Uh, uh, Bellacourt currently working with Derek Krause on the number 19 truck in the Gander trucks. And, uh, you know, he's going to be one that's starting kind of in the middle of the Hornets nest. Uh, Austin Hill, the uh, truck series and sometimes Xfinity series driver for Hattori Racing starting outside row seven in 14th tonight. He's going to be definitely be playing the survival game. And one more name I want to call uh, a note to uh, starting back in the 23rd position as the starting grid continues to scroll on the screen. But Harley White, glad to have Harley with us here this evening for the Feed NC 150 at Darlington, uh, representing for the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series National Tour. Uh, she was on tour last year, going to be back on tour again this year whenever uh, we get a chance to actually go racing again at the end of the pandemic. But Harley starting 23rd back there with uh, some other heavy hitters. I mentioned Derek Krause uh, in the Kevin Bellacourt connection. He actually starts 27th tonight. We've also got Ryan Truex in the field, uh, driving the number 40. Of course, he's a driver that runs part-time with Nice Motorsports, but was a former driver with Hattori Racing Enterprises back in the day. So a little bit of a tie-in there. As here we go, 110 laps. We're getting ready to turn him loose, and we are green at Darlington. Oh, and Weinrich spins the tires on the initial start as he tries to settle it down. That's going to allow Tommy Gossett to get to the early lead as they go side by side. 
for the runner-up spot. Everybody chasing a spot on the outside lane. You're, want, you're going to want to get high in a hurry, even on fresh tires, as Weinrich settles in to the two-spot, working down the back straight away, side-by-side. Side, not going to be something I think we're going to see a lot of early here, Seth, as everybody settles out single file among the top seven, eight, nine drivers. Absolutely. Yeah, these drivers, especially early on, are going to want to get single file, wait for their tires to warm up, because with the slick tires and the kind of banking these corners have, you want to make sure that car is going to be underneath you for the long run, as right now the closest battle up front looks like it's going to be between Shane Tyrion and the 62 of Chris Owens. Chris Owens on the move uh, certainly showed well actually uh, last week during the first race of the uh, Kicking the Tires Lower Half Dash Series had a run up among in the top five for quite some time, taking his talents over here for the Feed NC 150 this evening and settled in pretty nicely, picked off a spot on that initial start in the 62. And, you know, like we mentioned, everybody just settling down, trying to ride a little bit. This is not the time to really push yourself hard. It's a long race, 110 laps. 150 miles at Darlington, still quite a long race, and there's a lot of times for things to go right, a lot of time for things to go wrong, as Owens under pressure from the ice in Toyota Super Max McLaughlin trying to get a spot on him up front, side by side, just ahead of Owens, as uh, Tommy Gossett falling back, and Josh Weinrich to the lead at the end of lap number three. Uh, Tommy Gossett lost a lot of momentum when Weinrich got to his inside, and you see Shane T Tyrion was able to get around for second place, so losing two spots in the matter of two corners was the 80 of Tommy Gossett. And meanwhile, behind them, as you mentioned, that battle for fourth side-by-side, side, Max McLaughlin trying to make the inside line work against Chris Owens, not quite able to get the run off of four. Oh, and McLaughlin had to slide in across the nose of the 28 of Ricky Hart Jr. So that's one of those where a little bit nervous moments for the ice and Toyota Super. McLaughlin, uh, you know, we, we talk about him. He's got plenty of real-life talents between the uh, outlaw carts that he started his career on on dirt, moving up to the big block modifieds that he ran in the Northeast for several years and now in the Arkham Menard Series East. Uh, McLaughlin has, has done himself a solid job to be a diverse driver, but that was a little bit of a nervous moment as he almost took the front nose off the 28. It was tight trying to squeeze that one back in between Owens and Hart there. That's the battle that continues on for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And behind them, um, right well, Kevin Bellacourt's right behind a battle between Justin Gann and Noah Valerio, while the 30 and the 77 trying to go at it for position. They have completed five laps, about to complete the sixth lap of this event under green, but not without incident. I saw some smoke off of turn two, and I believe the 31 of Justin Wappen actually had an issue. Uh, he has brought his 31 to pit road for a stop, has thus fallen off of the lead lap. So... Uh, fortunately, the car spun down to the inside off the racing surface away from oncoming traffic, so we still remain green. Tough break for JWAP. Uh, I actually got to know him uh, first for a while uh, down in the Arkham Menard Series uh, ranks for quite some time, what was then the K&M Pro Series. He's since moved up to uh, Richard Childress Racing and works with their uh, Cup Series and Xfinity Series programs on the photography and media side. So uh, tough to see him on pit road early, but back closer towards the front of this field, looking at the 19 of Kevin Bellacourt right now, trying to chase down the 28 of Ricky Hart Jr., who lost a couple of positions last time by, dropped for, oh, Bellacourt gets low. Loose, has to go all the way to the apron of the racetrack to save that car. Valerio's going to get past as Bellacourt now, uh, or sorry, that was uh, Bronson Stafford and Chris Hughes that actually got past. Bronson Stafford in another 77 machine. So Stafford gets past, Chris Hughes gets past, Bellacourt slots in in the 11th position, and that car still sideways as Ryan Truex trying to make some tracks in the 40. He'll look to the inside. They saw when uh, Bellacourt got loose and slid up in the corner. There was some contact between himself and Bronson Stafford. And I would almost wonder, you know, that little bit of damage to the front of the 77 up there, if that's going to affect him here on the long run. You have to wonder as he is continuing to uh, try and stop the bleeding, so to speak, is, oh, Bella, I'm, I'm watching that 19 of Bellacourt and still getting nervous at how sideways it is through the center of the corner. He's got the two of Neil Quick, who's pressuring, and right behind the 12 of Paul Wilson is also right there. Three cars battling. That's 12th, 
13th and 14th as the two of Quick look into the inside and they nearly make contact. Quick going to have the advantage of the inside lane and sails it in to make the pass. We've had a lot of drivers here mid-pack that have gotten the wall at certain points of this race. We're only 11 laps in. Looking back there at 15th and 16th place where you find Mark Ellis and Austin Hill last time by. They both tagged the wall off of two. Yeah, Austin Hill uh, has said going into this that Darlington is not one of the easier tracks for him or on this service. The Toyota Susho Supra back there, uh, what's normally the 61 and ends up being the 27 here tonight of Austin Hill, completes 11 laps, sits in the 16th position and going to work on the four of Mark Ellis. Took a peak half a lane down to the inside, now looks back to the outside lane trying to make tracks as they work down the straightaway hill with a run. He'll take it to turn number three and uh, looks like that may be a pass and will be a pass for 15. The car battle for the fourth position. Tommy Gossett, Chris Owens, and right behind them, Justin Justin Gann trying to figure out where to go. He's going to actually make a pass there on Owens. Now sets his sight for the fourth position. And we're seeing the comers and goers. And Sam, I want to bring you in on this. I mean, obviously, we've gotten ourselves into a long green flag run for the moment. 13 laps about to be completed when White Rick comes around here. These drivers, we know the fuel window, but would any of them possibly consider, since we know that they can make it uh, if they come a little bit before halfway on one pit stop, would some of these guys struggling think about coming to pit roads sooner to get the fresh tires? I mean, short pitting is always going to be an option for some of these guys. Some of the people that need fresher tires, tires is more important at this track than really fuel, it seems like. So a lot of these drivers are going to have to watch out if they're going to be taking a short pit or not. You know what, Jacob? That 38 of Shane Tyrion, he is starting to close up the gap between himself and race leader John Weinrich. Closing the gap indeed. Tyrion has chopped it down to about three car lengths between himself and Weinrich out in front. The United Rentals Toyota Supra leads it, the 84 of Weinrich, but Tyrion has cut what was a second plus down to just a couple of tenths, 15 laps in. You mentioned comers and goers, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. The accordion between those top two starting to close in just a little bit as Tarion in the tire tracks of Weinrich hits three tenths of a second that time by across the line. Weinrich able to extend the gap by about a car length as they work back to one and two. Now as we've gotten ourselves into a little bit of a run here, we're starting to see typical Darlington. It is a, a long track, but it doesn't take long if drivers are struggling for them to be very shortly reeled in by the leaders and maybe put a lap down as the 84 actually got up into the wall there coming out of turn three. But we got some traffic up ahead that the two race leaders are going to have to deal with here. Traffic can force mental mistakes very quickly. Ow. Almost got into the 38 of Shane Terry and did that lap car. That's what we're talking about. Very, very nervous moments for the Rogue 38 of Tarion trying to chase down the 84 of Josh Weinrich. Weinrich leads it by about a car length less than that into turn number three as Tarion closes right up to the rear bumper of the 84. Max McLaughlin third, Tommy Gossett fourth, Justin Gannon fifth, and it's Ricky Hart, Chris Owens, Bronson Stafford, Ryan Truex, Neil Quick has worked his way up into the top 10 from r, &R Enterprises, uh, manufacturers of plenty of really, really cool racing merchandise that you can find more information by searching r, &R Enterprises online. The battle for the lead, though, working lap 18 down into the corner. Here comes Tarion, and I think Weinrich going to let Tarion go. New leader, he thought about the crossover, did Weinrich, but Shane Tarion to the point on lap 18. You saw there, Tyrion, that's the risk you run sometimes when you try and dive it in deep and slide job somebody is you run the risk of going up, getting the wall, losing your momentum. And I almost thought that maybe Weinrich was going to think about the crossover as the 38, I think, did tag the wall just the least little bit, but kept his momentum going just enough to keep the 84 in his rearview mirror. Yeah, now Tarion goes from the hunter to the hunted as Weinrich settles in, reloads, maybe going to try to make a pass. And uh, we should mention that that lap car uh, a lap or two ago that was trying to get out of the way of the race leaders, uh, well, that ended up out of our field of view into the inside wall, Seth. So, uh, that you know, you, you get those uh, snappy quick movements and disaster can strike very, very quickly. But this battle for the lead, exhilarating early on, 20 laps in, and Tarion and Weinrich have really been tit for tat at the front of the field. And we've got our first caution, so that's going to change everything up. 
as Tyrion gets the lead just about two laps before our first yellow comes out. We have not been without incident in these first 20 laps, but this is the first time that a caution has flown. And it may very well have been a guy that was struggling the entirety of this first run, the 19 of Kevin Bellacourt. Was trying to find the replay myself, but I believe it was Bellacourt actually who ran into a bit of trouble and went around heavy damage, it looks like, to the back end of that number 19 Toyota. So a tough break for Bellacourt, who ran among the top seven for the early stages of this race. He lost a lot of momentum there going into turn one, up into the wall, a lot of rear end damage, which is going to make that race car that was loose in the first 20 laps even looser. And also some front end damage there as well. He for the moment, remains on the lead lap, but uh, pretty significant hits there to both the front and rear of that car, and if it wasn't handling that great early on, it's probably with the damage not going to handle any better. I would have to believe that as we see most of the field on pit road for service under this caution, and uh, going to be uh, interesting to see exactly how pit stops shake out and what do you do. I would imagine, Seth, Ford will see four tires and uh, and fuel for the majority of the field because we know old tires at this racetrack do not usually serve you well if you're restarting up front. Absolutely. Sam, we got ourselves an early caution that kind of uh, splits it up for some of these guys as far as strategy the rest of the way if we remain green of when they would come to pit road for potentially their final pit stop. Yeah, I mean, the fuel window for these machines is going to be about 60 laps, so we still are going to have another pit stop later on in this race, but once you have your pit stop for fuel, you're pretty much set. All you have to worry about is if we have a green-white checkered at the end of this race, so you got to think about when you pit, set yourself up for just in case there's a green-white checkered. I want to remind everybody that here tonight, the, uh, the namesake of the race, the Feed NC 150, uh, this is to uh, help benefit FeedNC.com, which is a... Uh, a Mooresville soup kitchen in uh, North Carolina in the area that Atori Racing Enterprises has their uh, garage area in their shop. And we have available, if you would like to donate to it, we have available down, if you're watching on uh, Facebook Live, it's down in the comments of the video. We also have it in the video description over on YouTube. And I think one thing that I really love about it too is they have an option where you can, uh, they give you a price of it would feed a, a family for a week feed a family for a month but they also you know if you're not able to donate that much they give you where you can do a custom price and so anything that you can donate to that head on over and do because obviously a great race for a great cause and, and it really is great to see events like this i mean jacob you alluded to the fact that right now with us in this epidemic a lot of drivers are turning to the sim to be able to do these type of events and to be able to do it for a charitable cause that's amazing it really is. And, you know, I actually, uh, I, I worked for a couple of years in Mooresville and uh, would drive by what uh, what was the Mooresville Soup Kitchen uh, just about every day. So uh, very familiar with them, familiar with what they do. Uh, they served over 1,700 people last year uh, and, you know, 900 families in the Charlotte area being enrolled through the FeedNC.org program. Uh, they serve an average of 150 families each week. So a lot of, a lot of great work that they've done over the past uh, couple of actually going all the way back to 1987 so it's been a little more than 30 years now that they uh, have been able to uh, feed those in need and uh, for more information you can visit feednc.org to uh, learn and uh, also to be able to donate towards their cause so uh, we're going to get the restart I believe with 24 laps complete Shane Terrian going to lead the field back to green after winning the race off pit road Justin Gann restarting second third to Max McLaughlin fourth Neil Quick Neil Quick gained a lot of time during the pit stops was at the back end of the top 10 now going to restart outside row number two Ricky Hart Chris Hughes Paul Wilson Derek Krause out of the truck series rolling eighth Ryan Truex and uh, Josh Weinrich a really slow pit stop gonna put him 10th for this restart Weinrich entered the pit second and lost eight positions as you mentioned gonna restart just inside the top 10 in that 10th position we know he's got a fast car now we're gonna have to see how fast a car he's got back in traffic as Shane Tyrion and Justin Gang gonna lead them down we had a nice long green flag run there before that first caution let's see if these guys can settle out again here with a double file restart 
Green flag goes back in the air, working lap number 25. Couple of guys spin the tires on the bottom lane of the racetrack. Tarion gets away with the race lead over Justin Gann as they head down into turns one and two and back into the banking. Max McLaughlin is there in third. Neil Quick there in fourth is a little bit further back. Bronson Stafford, Ryan Truex, and Josh Weinrich trying to make tracks forward. Them all backed up from about seventh place back through around 12th. That's Weinrich down there on the inside, Ooh, side by side with Derek Kraus. Yeah, almost put the, the nine of Kraus up into the wall there, but the contact, they kept going. They're still side by side, heading down to one. Weinrich to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to put some pressure on the Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series. Young Gun, Kraus to the outside, trying to hold on. Kraus with the preferred lane. Weinrich slots back in oh, the line. Got a spin. Ignite. Got a spin there out of two. No caution, however. I believe it was the 15 of Grayson Pope that might have gone around. It's Another car also, uh, Mark Ellis in the four, but no caution. We remain green. They spun out of the racing line and all the cautions tonight called by the Sims. So able to keep it clean and green since it was able to clear before the leaders got back around. Still watching the battle for eighth place though. Kraus makes a maneuver to go to the bottom of the racetrack and Weinrich looks to the outside. It's Kraus trying to make the move on Paul Wilson. Weinrich almost scrapes the outside wall. Maybe going to get a Darlington strike and he's going to take advantage because Kraus could not complete the slide job. Weinrich going to try to make the same move now down into the corner he'll slide up across the nose of the 12 and Weinrich two for one in a span of about three corners he moves up from ninth to seventh now Weinrich is definitely on the charge he's picked up three spots since we went back green the only thing I'd wonder is how much of his tires is he going to use up in his charge to try to get back into the front of the field we also had a, a near miss back there around the 14th position a couple of laps ago a great save by Chris Owens, and boy, they are jacked up behind Derek Krause in the eighth position. Meanwhile, one of the Hattori drivers, Austin Hill in the Toyota Susho Supra on pit road for service, and I wonder if he might not have been one of the cars that was spinning and involved in that most recent incident that did not bring out a caution. So the 27 of Hill sitting on the pit lane getting service, and it looks like some repairs as it sits. Something to keep an eye on. He'll lose at least one lap. Under, uh, under service there on pit road. Up front though, the battle for the lead is tightening up. It's about to be three cars under a blanket. Shane Terrian leads it. Justin Gann though has closed right on the back bumper of the 38 and Max McLaughlin's there down the back straight away. McLaughlin looked really fast there on that first run and I wondered if we had some battling at the time between Shane Terrian and, and uh, Josh Weinrich, if maybe uh, McLaughlin would be able to get up there and make it a three-man fight. So he's definitely got good long run speed and he's got the top two within his sights. We'll see here as the tires start to wear down if he'll be able to pick off these top two. McLaughlin with the back bumper of the Mustang of Justin Gann in his sights. Gann looks to the inside going for the race lead. Hat barely slides back in front of McLaughlin. That was some dangerous maneuvering right there by the 30 of Justin Gann. That Ford Mustang trying to make some tracks forward but could not do it without jeopardizing that runner-up spot to Max McLaughlin. Three cars each separated by less than a car length as they work lap number 32. Tarion has it. Gann wants it's it McLaughlin back there trying to find a lane. Three keep kind of taking looks on each other here. And as they do that, the guy that's got the best seat in the house, fourth place, Neil Quick, kind of looking and observing what's happening up here, trying to figure out does he want to get up into this battle or does he want to wait and see what settles out? If I'm Neil Quick and I'm watching what these three are doing right now, I would want to wait for it to settle out too because if they get much closer, they're all going to wad it up in the corner and Neil Quick would end up being the leader at that point. So things that we're going to have to monitor as this battle for the lead continues to dance in and out of the banking here at Darlington Raceway. 33 laps going to go up on the board when they get back to the stripe and Neil Quick actually closing in maybe to make it a four-man fight for the race lead before long as traffic looms for the leaders again. It's the four of Mark Ellis who we saw have that spin-off turn too but it did not bring out a caution. You can see the rear end damage he had sustained from that incident. We'll see if he's going to be curious and get out of the way of these leaders or is he going to battle to try and keep himself on the lap he's on. You see he is going to be courteous, move out of the way of the race leader but boy I'll tell you what that battle for second is closed up now as Neil Quick has entered into the fray. 
Neil Quick is there. It's now a three-car battle for second as opposed to being a three-car battle for the lead. Tarion able to open up a bit of a gap over Gann, over McLaughlin, who now takes the runner-up spot away. So McLaughlin actually did slide past as the three navigated traffic, and it's McLaughlin to the runner-up spot. I think I think Gann may have had a little bit of a moment there and actually had to get out of the throttle because he lost almost a full second to leader Shane Tyrion and also lost the two spot. Also seeing that Josh Weinrich, who restarted back in 10th, has fought up to 5th, and he's not too far away from getting up here to 4th place. So right now, the 84 trying to recover back from the positions he lost on pit road, and he's one of the fastest cars on the track right now. Weinrich a tenth faster than the leader last time by as just ahead of him. A couple of car lengths. The battle for second is on again. The 30 of Justin Gann back to the inside of the ice and Supra. Max McLaughlin slides up in front of the nose and takes the spot as caution waves on the 36th lap tonight. Second caution of the day. And I believe it could very well be Chris Owens. It is as the 62 gets it refired on the back straightaway. Was running up in the top 10 at the start of this race. Lost quite a number of positions on pit road. Restarted back in 14th. And looks like it may have just been a solo spin off of turn two to put us under the caution for the second time. So tough break for Chris Owens who started among the top five and we believed was going to be a favorite. Uh, for this event, at least to run up in one of the top three positions tonight. But now Chris Owens going to be at the back of the order as we continue forward. Well, so They got wadded up back there, Jacob, in yeah. turn one, and that's what led to this incident because I think that's Ryan Truex that got down on the apron, came up at, off of turn two, crowded into the 62. As we uh, get a chance to digest all of that the leaders back on pit road for the second time and yet again you're going to take tires you're going to take fuel because if you don't you're basically going to get eaten alive when we go back under green it'll be interesting to see because we had a lot of drivers gain spots on pit road the last time we had a lot of drivers lose spots on pit road and i almost wonder if maybe going back to the first pit stop when we saw the 84 of weinrich lose so many spots he spent about 40 seconds on pit lane while everybody else spent somewhere between uh, 16 to 17 seconds almost wonder if there might have been a little bit of damage repair going on there I could believe it. Um, you know, usually, especially at this racetrack, it's easy to end up with some damage that would necessitate some repairs early on. So, uh, of course, uh, we talk about it all the time. You get into the outside wall a little bit here, you get the proverbial Darlington stripe, don't you? So, uh, you know, and, and still a long way to go and potentially a lot more of uh, said stripes to be handed out. Although uh, we are approaching... Uh, surprisingly enough, the halfway point of this race, about uh, 15 or so laps away from halfway. So we're already more than a third of the way through this deal. And uh, when we cycle back timing and scoring here in just a moment to uh, get a look at the top 10, what we're going to find, I believe, is uh, a bunch of new players inside that top 10. Absolutely right. Uh, right now, the top five are drivers that we've seen up front all day. But... You look back there, Tommy Gossett has worked his way up to sixth. Chris Hughes is going to be restarting in seventh. Derek Krause, who we saw a lot of drivers sticking him to the outside line, making passes. He's going to be in eighth. Bronson Stafford up there in ninth. And right now, clean your top ten is going to be Noah Valerio. So, yeah, to your point, some guys that we maybe haven't seen up here at the front might have been hanging back, just trying to keep themselves out of trouble. And now, as you said, we're nearing the halfway point. Maybe it's go time for these guys to start gaining some track position. It's going to be interesting to see when you hit the go button because we aren't quite to the halfway point of this race yet. So a lot of time still to settle things out and decide things. But I really like the look that the 38 of Shane Terrian has had through the early portion of this race. That looks like a car that can get out front, stay out front and dominate. And, uh, you know, as we've seen these first couple of cautions, one thing I think we should point out that's a little bit different than a lot of the uh, recent uh, broadcast eye races that we've seen around the service is there are no resets in this race tonight. So if you take a hard hit, you are very likely done. And we have seen the now 62 of Chris Owens uh, take it to the garage and his night will be over, unfortunately, after such a strong qualifying effort. So a tough break. 
So obviously, when you come to Darlington, it's got the two monikers, the Lady in Black, the track too tough to tame. So you know it's a special track, but I also love the story of the track as well with its configuration. Uh, it used to be a cotton and peanut field, and when it was purchased, they wanted to make it a uniform track. They wanted turns one and two to be exactly the same way as three and four, but the, the, uh, the contract that they signed, the farmer said that they could not obstruct a minnow pond, which is over where turn four is. So that's why it turns three and four, a little bit more congested in terms of its angle than one and two. And the unique egg-shaped oval obviously has been a place that a lot of drivers want to tackle. It has indeed. Getting set for the restart with 40 laps complete. Shane Terry and Justin Gann going to make up the front row. Max McLaughlin, Neil Quick, row two. Josh Weinrich, Tommy Gassett, row three. Chris Hughes, Bronson, Stafford, row four. Noah Valerio and Paul Wilson, the rest of the top ten. As the field gets the green flag, 40 complete, 70 laps to go. Big jump by Terry, and as here comes Max McLaughlin again. These two were battling Gann and McLaughlin for the runner-up spot, and they make contact into turns one and two. Gann up the racetrack, McLaughlin with the momentum, and move McLaughlin to the two spot down the back straight away. The contact between those two for second place allowed race leader Shane Terry to actually gap himself from the rest of the field, and they're still wadded up from second on back. Oh, side by side between Weinrich and Gossett for that four position, and here comes Josh Weinrich. Fakes Gann to the bottom of the racetrack, that tries to fill the hole. Been in turn one. I believe that was the possibly the two of Neil Quick. No caution, however. He didn't come back up the track. No, he didn't, and that's going to be a tough break for another driver in Neil Quick, who has run among the top seven or eight almost the entire race so far. So Neil Quick going to settle in, lose all that track position, but at the very least able to continue on in this race with visually what looks like not a ton of damage to that deuce. And he dropped back to the 17th position. The driver that he made contact with, he went around off the nose of Bronson Stafford, who also lost a lot of positions. He's fallen back to 14th, but that battle for third continues to be hot and heavy between Gann and Weinrich. Weinrich, a car length back as Justin Gann tries to uh, relock and make another run at Max McLaughlin. But here comes Weinrich, right to the back bumper of the Mustang of Gann. They dice for third as we cross 43 laps complete. Weinrich, the United Rentals Toyota Supra, trying to make the run. Oh, and Gann gets the fence. Gann gets the fence in the corner and going to lose momentum and lose third position to Josh Weinrich now as they work down the back straightaway. Turn two has been a trouble spot for a bunch of these guys tonight. Weinrich takes third. That now brings Tommy Gossett into this vicinity as he'll try and see if he can make a move on Gann for fourth. Gann, however, nice recovery. He's getting back to the bumper of Weinrich. That battle for third may not be over yet. I don't know that it's over yet, but I think Josh Weinrich is trying to make sure it gets over pretty quickly. He's trying to run away and open up about three car lengths over Justin Gann. Tommy Gossett back there in the 80 in position number five, now trying to close in to do battle for fourth with Gann. But Weinrich has not been able to shake the 30. I thought once he got to third, he would be able to get away. But instead, he has kind of uh, just let Gann stay within sight. So uh, a tough break there. I'm actually, one, one thing that just caught my eye shuffling a little further back in the field is the driver that's come up to the number 11 position and actually battling side by side now the 54 of Tom Bourne going to make the pass on the 87 of Jay Crable as they work down the back straight away and that's going to move Bourne from 30th all the way up into the top 10 and look at Derek Kraus coming back he got shuffled back a good ways too after some contact and now all over the back bumper of Crable for position also, Derek Krause almost wrecked on that last restart. A lot of drivers mid-pack were spinning their tires, and I couldn't tell who it was, but someone almost came down and doored Derek Krause. He was almost down to the inside wall to avoid, so a nice job recovering, keeping his foot in it, and he's up to the 11th position right now. Just ahead of them, the 54 of Bourne tapped the wall on the outside of the racetrack, able to gather the car back up, settle it in, and he completes the top 10 right now. Meanwhile, the Hattori duo of Max McLaughlin and Josh Weinrich is at the front of the field, and they are quickly closing in on race leader Shane Terry. And although Weinrich about to go to war with McLaughlin for second, its driver 
versus his, ver, its driver versus his PR manager as Weinrich trying to apply the pressure onto the back bumper of McLaughlin's machine. They work off the corner. 48 laps complete. Here comes Weinrich to the inside. These two trying to figure out who's going to be the one to try and run down Shane Therian for the race lead, and it looks like it is going to be Weinrich. You saw there that McLaughlin tried to pinch him down going into turn one, but Weinrich had nothing of it. Easily completed the pass before they even got to two. Weinrich now going to chase down race leader Shane Terry, and it's five, six, maybe, maybe make it seven car lengths as they work back to the line. 49 laps going to go in the books this time across the start finish line, and you see how quickly the gap opens between Weinrich and McLaughlin. It's four car lengths between them. Five more car lengths up to race leader Shane Terrian. Em, I know you've been working your calculator there. These guys went back green on lap 40 with 70 laps to go. So what do they do? Do they split it in half 35-35 or do they run it as far as they can with the possibility of a caution? I feel like if you're running in the back, you've got to split it. You've got to try to gain as much time short pitting. With having fresher tires, you're going to be running about a half second faster than some of these guys that are running up front. You've got to at least make it as a caution comes out and everything changes now. Third caution of the day going to come out and it looks like it may have very well been uh, involving the 87 of David uh, Gross Close. I believe also the 20 of Ron Shoot, who is uh, slow there out of turn four was collected. So a multi-car wreck out of the final corner right nearing the halfway point of this race. Yeah, Ron Schutte, uh one lap down, sitting back in the 19th position when all that started to break out. So a tough break for Schutte, uh, who was uh, actually the interior mechanic on Austin Hill's number 16 truck, as well as the tire specialist for Hattori Racing Enterprises in the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series. So, uh, you know, taking a stab behind the driver's seat this time in tonight's feed NC 150 and uh, just ran into a little bit of trouble there. That is not the caution Shane Terrian wanted to see. That erased a pretty solid lead over Josh Weinrich and Max McLaughlin, and that is going to put that Hattori duo right alongside the 38. When we go back green, a late decision by Max McLaughlin, but everybody else right back to pit road here as we cross lap 52 driver that definitely did like seeing that caution come out however actually two drivers that managed to avoid were Bronson Stafford and Neil Quick who had had that incident back a couple of laps ago and lost a lot of track position. So the field working its way down pit road, and this going to be very critical. We know that Weinrich a couple stops ago did not have a very quick pit stop on pit road, and that is going to be critical as far as track position and potential success is concerned before this is over. All the leaders in and uh, most of the right sides going up for uh, what's going to be more four-tire pit stops for everybody involved. As we see a uh, couple of cars behind the leaders down and away, and it looks like Tarion is just going to win the race off pit road over the 84 of Weinrich. It was definitely close between those two, but I think you're correct. Just maybe about a splitter, maybe a little more. Shane Tyrion wins the battle off pit road. Sam, I mean, if my calculations are wrong, these guys might be able to save a little bit here and make it the rest of the way at this point. Yeah, at this point, all drivers are good to the end. This is, uh, this is pretty much your money stop that they just had. Unless we have another caution where we could see more strategy involved of cars possibly taking two tires, most of these drivers are going to be taking four tires if we see another caution. Start looks like it's going to be just at the halfway point. We're probably going to go back green on lap 55 right on the dot. Shane Tyrion's done a pretty good job keeping him in his rearview mirror, but it was looking like maybe, just maybe, Josh Weinrich was going to start reeling him in. Now the two of them are going to be side by side in this restart, so a little bit better of an opportunity for Weinrich to take the race lead back. So far in this race, Jacob, we've only had two drivers out in front, and they're running first and second. Yes, we have right now, and since we're going to go back green right at the halfway point, we may as well go ahead and right before the halfway point of tonight's race, bring uh, everybody watching online the iRacing Midway Race Break, brought to you by iRacing, the world's leading online racing simulation. Developed from the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service, iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on virtual tracks all around the world. iRacing is home to a wide variety of officially sanctioned series with racing from the Australian Supercars, IndyCar, 
NASCAR, IMSA NASCAR, the World of Outlaws, and more. And we'll go ahead and run you down the way they're going to come back to green flag racing with 55 laps complete. It will be Shane Terrian that leads the party over Josh Weinrich. Justin Gann rides in third. Max McLaughlin fourth. And Noah Valerio going to restart from the fifth position. Paul Wilson sits sixth. Chris Hughes up to seventh. Derek Krause, another one of the representatives from the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series, has climbed from 27th up to eighth so far tonight for the Stratford, Wisconsin Young Gun. Uh, David Gross close. First time we've really called his name tonight. Sits it's ninth, and uh, actually, Gross Close now going to shuffle back, so it's going to be Neil Quick up in the ninth position after I think a few people came back down pit road late, and uh, the eight, the 87 of Jay Craybill going to complete the top 10. The rest of the cars on the lead lap at this juncture. Derek Newsom sits 11th, Stephen Tarando 12th, Tommy Gossett 13th, Ryan Truex 14th, Bronson Stafford 15th, Gross Close falls back to 16th, and the last car on the lead lap, Seth Tomborn in 17th place as we get set to go back racing. Now you've got a couple of cars that are a lap down, Ricky Hart Jr. and Ron Shute, but you've also got Austin Hill, who's now only minus two. He got the wave around and uh, got one of his laps back. And as we enter into the second half of this race, we may end up seeing more yellows. So there's every likelihood the 28, the 20, the 27, we could see them back on the lead lap in the closing stages. We may well as we go back green. This concludes tonight's iRacing Midway Race Break. And with more than 80,000 drivers on the service and more than 80 laser scan tracks and cars to choose from, iRacing is the original eSports racing game. For more information, visit iRacing.com today. Green flag back in the air. Shane Tyrion, as we move into the second half of this race, leads the field. Weinrich settled right into the runner-up spot as Max McLaughlin went to war for a moment. Still going to war. They make contact. He and Justin Gann. This is a battle that has has not gone away, but McLaughlin clears for third. That killed the momentum of the 30 as the caution is out. It was a side-by-side -side brewing for fourth between Valerio and Justin Gann. I think Gann was just ahead when the caution came out. Caution's going to come out for the driver that I believe just got the free pass on that last yellow, David Grossclose. So Gross Close falling now uh, to the tail of the lead lap, had restarted in the 15th position and a tough break for the 87 as it looks like it may be race ending damage for the 87. Very, very heavy damage to the front end of that machine and a, a tough break after uh, it looks like he was in a, in a pretty tight battle with the 20 of uh, Ron Schutte and ended up just smacking the wall off turn number two straight down into the inside safer barrier, and that was the end of that. It's one of the tough things about a track like Darlington, too, is when you go up into the wall, the instinctual thing as a driver is to hook it to the left to try and get it off, and when the car goes around, it's going to head to the left, and a lot of times that inside wall separating the racetrack from pit road, it's going to hit you in a hurry, and that's exactly what happened to the 87 here. So the field is going to uh, re-rack, re-stack, and we will have another shot to be able to uh, sit back and look at all of this. But as we circulate under another caution flag here in tonight's Feed NC 150, it's a good time to remind you that tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by Feed NC. Established in 1987 as the Mooresville Soup Kitchen, Feed NC stands for Food Education Essentials and Dignity and is a food-focused resource that seeks to end the cycle of hunger and poverty with programs and opportunities for those in need. Since its inception, Feed NC has expanded its services to to include regional markets, a food pantry, and workforce education. In addition to the thousands of lives it's, it's impacted, Feed NC serves more than 100,000 meals annually and delivers more than 125,000 pounds of food per month. They served more than 1,700 people in 2019 and serve an average of 150 families each week. For more information and to learn how you can donate, visit feednc.org. And if you would like to donate tonight, uh, the links are provided in the comments if you're watching on Facebook Live, as well as down in the video description if you're watching us here on YouTube. So we're getting set to go back green, and we're going to be in the vicinity of 50 laps to go. It's getting down to the point now where you kind of are expecting that these are going to be maybe some short spurt restarts, everybody trying to get what they can get in terms of track position. Absolutely, and I think those who restart on the outside are really going to be in the catbird seat. I look at Josh Weinrich as being in a prime position. If he can time the restart with Shane Terrian in the right way, that 84, I think, is going to be on a mission 
to go to the front of the field here in the closing laps. Max McLaughlin is back there. Justin Gann just has not had the get up and go on a lot of these restarts in that 30, I think, to be able to take advantage of that outside lane. And that's going to be a struggle because if that outside lane gets stacked up, that could be, Seth, where we see some calamity. Also seen a number of drivers up at the front, mid-pack, and rear of the field on fresh tires have trouble with spinning the, the tires on restarts. We're going to be going green. These guys were out there for about a lap and a half on green flag conditions, so that's going to make their tires even more worn and maybe a little bit of an issue for them when we eventually do get the green flag once more. So circulating, I think it'll be six, it may be 61 when we go back to green. I think we'll have 50 laps to go on the restart should the lights go out this time and i'm thinking they just did they did maybe not all right so field will start to double up they were just a, they're just a little slow doubling up at the front of the field but uh, we will go back green with 50 laps to go in this feed nc 150 and that's been what's really cool uh with the charitable initiatives that Tory Racing Enterprises has put together, uh, both their most recent race and the one that we're watching on uh, Flat Out tonight, Seth, is the fact that they have raised a good amount of money for charity and for FeedNC.org and are going to continue to, I think, beyond just the race tonight. And that's the coolest thing about all of this. Absolutely agree with you on that. We've had a great turnout here tonight as well. Uh, everybody that entered into tonight's race, the proceeds, the entry fees went to Feed NC. So obviously a lot of money raised for that to group here tonight just on the number of entries in the event alone. 19 cars still running, 17 on the lead lap. Ricky Hart Jr. was the recipient of the free pass on that last caution. Green flags have to come back out here and it's going to be with 50 laps to go. And a big jump by the 38 of Shane Terry and Max McLaughlin on the move, trying to get one back from Josh Weinrich. Weinrich, though, with a deep dive into turn number one, runs right up to the back bumper of the road. 38 of Shane Terry and off turn two, a bump as Weinrich with a big run, looks to the inside, side by side for the lead in turn three. Going to clear him through the center of the corner. Can he get or up and run him up a four? And yes, he just barely does. Barely is right. That was as tight as it gets, but I think Weinrich knew he had to make the move right off the restart if he was going to get some clean air and have a shot to, as they say in the business, get gone. And Weinrich going to try to do just that now. He leads. Terrian, though, trying to come back. Weinrich bobbled off the corner, and Terrian took a look, has to fall back in the line as they're leaning on each other for third. Justin Gann back to the inside of Max McLaughlin one more time. They continue to lean off of turn four. McLaughlin is going to edge ahead down the straightaway. That stacked him up for fifth place. Paul Wilson going to get by Noah Valerio, moving to the top five. Now crossover by Valerio. Valerio tries to make the inside work. They make contact in the 12. Spins, collects the 77 of Valerio. They keep it going, the 12 down all the way to the inside. Tags the inside wall, and in turn three, somehow everybody kept it straight, and we remain under the green flag. Valerio falls from fifth now to about the 10th, 11th position as they all try to settle it back in, actually 13th as they cross the line. So Valerio lost about eight spots. The big winner in that melee, the nine of Derek Krause, who's moved up to position number five with a big gap behind him. Absolutely stunned that Valerio and Wilson were able to keep it straight. Neither one actually spun all the way around and a tremendous job by everyone behind. They were four wide at a point going into turn three, trying to get by those slower machines and somehow everyone kept it together. We're still green. That by all rights and means probably should have been a caution and it wasn't. It should have been, and you're correct. It somehow wasn't. How, I'm really not sure. But we are inside of 50 to go. It'll be 45 laps to go when they come back to the line. I really believed when the 84 of Josh Weinrich got the lead, he was going to be able to pull away from Shane Terrian. Not so, however. Terrian has stayed within three car lengths, and Max McLaughlin has again cleared the 30 of Justin Gann. That maybe has been, Seth, the most intriguing battle of this entire race. McLaughlin Laughlin and Gann have been all over each other for the better part of 65 laps, and they have not given one another heed. 
Oh, they've been around each other for a long time. They can't seem to be able to break away from each other, and both have tried either lane on the other, and it seems like it's been a stalemate up to this point. They work back into turns one and two, 67 laps as maybe a tap to the wall for the 30 of Justin Gann. Gann's so good through the center of the corner, though. He's able to run McLaughlin down by about two car lengths from the center of the corner off as they work down the back straightaway in three, though. He dives it in deep to cut it to a car length maybe half a car length. Gann is there, off turn four. McLaughlin tries to pull it back out just a little bit. He extends it back to a car length as they work into one again. Rick Krause running by himself for the moment in the fifth position, just found the Darlington stripe off of turn four. Got a couple of drivers that have been making some moves for position. Tommy Gossett got around Chris Hughes a lap ago, moved up to sixth. Bronson Stafford got around Jay Crabble to move up to the eighth spot. Travel back there in the 87, uh, sits ninth right now. Still a good run, came up from 21st, but nobody has advanced more positions than the Stratford, Wisconsin Truck Series driver, Derek Krause, 27th to 5th. He has gone, and oh, by the way, not only is he in the Truck Series this year for McAnally Hilgeman Racing, but Derek Krause also the reigning champion of what's now the Arkham and Art Series West with Bill McAnally Racing one year ago. So a pretty star-studded resume for the young teenager as he works right now inside the top five. Up front, though, the battle for the lead is compressing and compressing quickly. Shane Terrian in the 38 has caught Josh Weinrich one more time. They run nose to tail off the exit of the banking, and this going to be a fight to turn number three. Terrian with a run may take a look to the inside. Uh, three laps ago, it was five car lengths separating these two, and now back bumper to front bumper here for Shane Tyrion as he's trying to see if he can make a move on that 84 machine, but if he's going to make it happen, he's going to probably have to do it on the inside because I don't think Weinrich's going to give him the top side. So the question is, when and where does Tyrion think oh, he's going to make that Weinrich. momentum work? Weinrich bobbled off turn number two, had to really dive it a little bit lower than I think he was anticipating. And I think Tarion may have hesitated a little bit because he lost a couple of car lengths when, when Weinrich stumbled there off the banking. They work around 71 laps complete this time by, so it'll be 39 laps to go as Weinrich by two car lengths still holds the advantage. The battle for third, however, between McLaughlin and Gann, well, it's just about this close, just a second and a half behind the race leaders. Be interesting to see if Tyrion actually tries to make a move on Weinrich and those two battle, if that will bring McLaughlin and Gann up into the battle for the race lead. Right now, the two of them are running somewhere about a second and a half behind second place Tyrion. So they got a little bit of work to do. But if the top two start to battle and lose a little bit of momentum in terms of lap times, we could have a four man fight for the lead as we have closed in to less than 40 laps to go. The problem is, even as Weinrich and Tyrion battle, they have opened the gap to almost two seconds over third running Max McLaughlin, and that is uh, not what McLaughlin has wanted to see over the course of this race. Those two have really kind of been in a league of their own, Weinrich and Tyrion, throughout this race. It's now uh, 73 laps complete and 37 to go as uh, Weinrich, Tarion, McLaughlin, Gann, and Krause, the front five. Then it's Tommy Gossett, Chris Hughes, Bronson Stafford, Jay Crable, Neil Quick, the remainder of the top 10. 15 cars remain on the lead lap, but all eyes on this battle for the lead. It's back in three and four. It has not quit. Tyrion trying to find a lane on Weinrich. We're starting to close in on traffic. That's the 28 of Ricky Hart Jr. that they would encounter in the next couple of corners. It's gonna take a little bit of time to catch up to him, but when they do, I mean, would Shane Tyrion maybe think about using that car as a pick? Of course you do. It, when, when you're trying to battle somebody that's as evenly matched as Weinrich is, you take advantage of any little opening that you think you may be able to utilize in order to make that pass, whether it's pinning Weinrich behind the slower car, whether it's making the move while Ron Weinrich is trying to lap said slower car, as all that's out the window. Caution flag waves with 35 to go. I believe it was Bronson Stafford and possibly the 14 of Chris Hughes that got together. They were battling at the time up in side of the top 10 I believe it was for seventh and that brings out our fifth caution of the day it actually started with the nine car getting contact with the 14 it would have been Derek Krause 
who and was Kraus, up in the fifth position, I believe. Yeah, Kraus able to keep going. He lost one spot. I think he got into the wall just a little bit uh, before that that uh, slowed his momentum. And then uh, the two behind him in Hughes there and uh, Wilson just really with nowhere to go. The leaders are on pit road one more time on lap 76. So coming to 34 to go. I'm not sure if this is the last round of stops. But I would have to believe if we don't get another caution until very late in the race, Seth, you know, if, if we go green for a while from here, I wouldn't imagine you'd give up track position to come down pit road, would you? I mean, absolutely not. Maybe if the race leader stays out, everybody might duck onto pit road and try and leave him out there. But I, I kind of, I think you're exactly right. At this point in time, you've got what you've got. There's so limited number of laps left to be run here at Darlington. Track position is going to be key over tires. And it's going to be a drag race off pit road advantage Tarion one more time. So uh, that pit stall selection uh, and having the number two or sorry, the number three pit stall for Tarion, but having the lead coming on to pit road, that's been the difference because just been able to get that service done a touch quicker for the 38. And uh, that will keep Tarion out in front down the stretch run to the finish. Of course, we've seen that on the restarts that Tyrion has been the control car. He's been able to gap himself pretty well over the rest of the field. We got a car on pit road. That's the 84 of Weinrich. He's coming back down. I'm I'm shocked. I'm legitimately shocked at this. I want I wonder if there was an issue perhaps on the stop where maybe he didn't get all the fuel in it or uh, you know some sort some sort of problem on that pit stop I can't imagine uh, you know he's just coming back in to top off we'll have to wait and see and when we had the fourth caution come out they were good to go on fuel so it can't be a fuel issue but I, I'm very confused about this because one of the top the top two fastest cars on the track all race long is going to be restarting somewhere back in the vicinity of probably 13th when we eventually get back green. That's a lot of cars to try to pass with only a limited number of laps left in this race. Yeah, that's a very, very heavy blow. And I'll be interested uh, if he can race his way back towards the front in the closing laps to see exactly the reasoning behind that second stop for Weinrich later on if we get a chance to talk to him after the race. So now the way it's going to line up is the 38 of Shane Terrian going to lead it over the 30 of Justin Gann. Max McLaughlin restarts third. And how about this for a name that we haven't seen among the top five all race long ryan truex out of the nascar gander rv and outdoors truck series up to fourth for this next restart and uh update on the 84 of weinrich actually had a little bit of damage to that 84 so he was actually in for repairs before the restart and that is a tough tough break for him looks like he's going to restart maybe 10th but that's still a lot that's still a lot of ground to make up the damage he was trying to get it fixed on that first stop seth and did not get it fixed well after our first caution he lost a lot of spots on pit road and restarted back in the 10th position was able to fight his way up i think it was to fourth before we had our second caution so we know he's got a fast enough car to cut through traffic but we're going to be going back green with 31 laps to go. Is that enough time to get up there before Shane Therian, Max McLaughlin, Justin Gann gap themselves away from the rest of the field? I'm not sure. He's got a good race car, but I'm, I'm just not convinced that you're going to be able to pull that off even with 31 laps to go. But maybe the outside lane will be a bit of a benefit. 31 to go as we get ready to come back to the restart. The feed NC 150. Green flag back in the air. We're underway again. And here comes Max McLaughlin inside Justin Gann. It's been the battle for third for the longest time. Now it's the battle for second and McLaughlin takes it in one. And Truex going to get past there for fourth as Tommy Gossett will clear him, move himself up a spot into the top five. And now Ryan Truex under fire from Neil Quick. What a comeback for the two after going around off the nose of Bronson Stafford over in turn one laps ago. Well, and meanwhile, we're seeing a driver. A young, we call this seeing red. If you're driving angry or driving like a man possessed, Josh Weinrich on that restart 10th 
to sixth in five corners for the 84. He has got a lightning quick United Rentals Toyota Supra and Weinrich putting it on display. 30 laps to go in the feed and C150. His next target is Ryan Truex in the battle for fifth. It doesn't matter how much experience you've got at Darlington or what position you're running in. The lady in black always finds a way to get you. The race leader, Shane Thierry, that last time around got the wall off of turn four. That's allowed Max McLaughlin to close in for that race lead. And you got to wonder now, is there damage that may hinder that 38? McLaughlin's not been able to be in the same league as Terry for most of the night. Does he have a shot now? The Arkham and RD driver rolling the outside lane of the racetrack, trying to find some momentum, drawing a bead on the back bumper of the 38 of Tyrion as they come to the line. 82 laps complete, 28 laps to go. McLaughlin there in one. You saw the near miss off turn two as pole sitter Tommy Gossett running in fourth at the time, got into the wall, had to bring it down to the apron. He has dropped all the way back to 16th. He's actually on pit road repairing damage. So a tough break there for the pole sitter with an incident off turn two that did not bring out the caution late in this race at Darlington. And all that's allowed Josh Weinrich to get back up to the fourth spot, albeit some 10 car lengths behind third place Justin Gann. However, he was as fast as the leader Shane Tyrion last time by, I believe, yet we're going to see the battle between the 38 and the 84 for the race win. Weinrich from 10 car lengths back, closing rapidly on third place Justin Gann as Max McLaughlin falls a little bit off the lead. I don't know if we're going to be seeing the checkered flag before another yellow flag, but you mentioned about the run Ryan Truex is having right now running in fifth place. Back when we had that last green flag run before our latest caution, he was running back in 11th and running lap times similar to the top four. So we know he's got a good long run speed car. And by the way, Seth, one thing we ought to point out if we haven't mentioned it before now is Shane Terrian, one of the few drivers that is uh, competing here on iRacing on a controller as opposed to a regular sim and wheel. So should he win this race, it's something, a very unique approach on Tyrion's part uh, as far as how to drive this sim and make it work. He's been successful up to now. Can he hang on to that for another 25 laps? I have to wait and see as we've got McLaughlin getting reeled in by Justin Gann and the top four are starting to catch up to traffic I believe that is uh, Valerio there in the 77 that they're about to reel in currently running two laps down and we'll see if he's going to give way to these race leaders as the battle continues to be for second and we said it before we'll say it again McLaughlin and Gann cannot get away from each other in this race no they've been almost tip for tat all race long never separated by more than about two car lengths meanwhile Weinrich is reeling both of them in in fourth He's closed it down to less than four car lengths as they work off the corner and back to the start-finish line. It is 23 laps to go. Again, Weinrich a tenth faster than race leader Shane Terrian in open track. So can Weinrich run these two down, make the passes relatively quickly? I think the hardest thing that Weinrich's going to see here is he's got two cars to pass and there's not really been a hole between them for most of the race to allow him to slide up in between the two of them. He may have to drive it in deep enough to try and clear both of them in one shot. I'm not sure if he can get enough straightaway momentum to do that, especially with the fact that you can see there's a little bit of separation now between McLaughlin and Gann. Maybe that will allow him to have a mano -a mano versus the 30, but also a thing that's going against him too is we're closing in on 20 laps to go, so he's got to make the pass on these guys quickly so he has enough time, based on the lap times he's run faster than race leader Shane Tyrion, to reel him in, let alone pass him. Yeah, he's been a tenth faster than Tyrion the last couple of laps, but 21 to go and being held up behind this 84. That's, you know, that's not what you want to do. That time by, they were basically dead even on the stopwatch within a hundredth of a second. And Weinrich trying to wind it up. 
set up a run, make something happen. 20 laps to go when they get back to the line. Here he goes to the inside on the 30 of Justin Gann. Can he drive it in deep enough to make the pass? Not this lap. He'll circulate the banking. He'll fall back in line. 20 to go as McLaughlin gets loose. McLaughlin gets loose. And here comes the 30 of Justin Gann to the outside. They race side by side. Oh, contact. And Gann spins down to the apron. Weinrich dispatches them both. A save by Justin Gann, but to your point, two for the price of one. You talked about him passing them both in a corner. Well, they helped him with that, and now Weinrich has nothing but clean racetrack between himself and the 38 race leader, Shane Tyrion. That could not have worked out any better if Josh Weinrich had actually planned it as coming down the stretch. He is now, the problem is he lost half a second trying to check up as the 30 of Gann almost went spinning. So now it's 1.7 seconds between Tyrion and Weinrich with 18 laps to go when they come back to the line. Can Weinrich run him down? He's got to be a tenth faster a lap if he's going to get the job done. We have to remind everybody that when we went back green for the restart, the 84 of Weinrich restarted back in 10th. In 16 laps, he has worked his way up to second place and right now currently trying to close in a second and a half distance between himself and Shane Tyrion. You almost wonder if he might hope for a caution because I don't know if he thinks he's got a car fast enough to get to the back bumper of the 38 before we get to the white flag lap. Battle's going to go on here for the fourth position. That's where we find Ryan Truex along with Justin Gann after that tremendous save. Truex on the top side. Gann the inside contact and Truex is into the wall off of two. Keeps it straight. He's going to lose some spots. That moves the 54 of Tom Bourne up into the top five. Yeah, Tom Bourne from 30th has been able to make some tracks and done a tremendous job in that 54 tonight as Truex heading to pit road or at least heading uh, potentially to, to, I think he's going to take a tow here back to pit road. Unfortunate break for the 40 of Truex and that's going to end any hope he had of a strong run inside of the final 20 laps of this race. Shane Tyrion has been able to pull away and gap Josh Weinrich the first couple of laps, Weinrich was a tenth faster. Now it's been Tyrion the last two laps that has been a tenth a lap faster. 1.7 seconds now. The advantage with 15 laps to go. And I think you're right, Seth. At this point, Josh Weinrich is hoping for a yellow. At this point now, it's all going to come down to lap times because the 84 of Weinrich has now cleared the lap machine of Noah Valerio. There's nobody between him and Shane Therian. So if he's going to lay down really good lap times, he's going to have to do them quick because there's 15, now 14 laps to go as Therian ticks off another one. He's going to have to utilize that inches from the wall line, as I've heard it referred to in the past, the Tyler Reddick line, when you are just hanging the rear of that car right against the safer barrier, trying to make time. You can do it at Homestead Miami Speedway on the sim. You can do it here at Darlington on the sim, but it, you've got to be brave in order to do it and uh, just be an inch or maybe a couple of inches off that outside safer barrier in order to make time. Weinrich a little bit faster that last lap. He cut into it by about a tenth, but he's going to need more than that. We're coming back to 12 laps to go across the line. 12 laps to go and about a 1 and 2 and 7 ten seconds rather between the top two. And at this point in time, you'd think that maybe Shane Therian's out there for a Sunday drive, but knowing the configuration of this track, he cannot allow himself to get mentally unfocused. He has to keep his focus on him and make these final circuits to bring this thing home because Darlington's one of those tracks. If you have a mental lapse, it could cost you dearly. And I think Weinrich may have just had one of those mental lapses, a little bit of a bobble. He lost three tenths of a second to Terry and last time by. The gap is almost, we'll call it two seconds even, coming to 11 laps to go in the feed NC 150. And one more time, we can tell you that tonight's broadcast 
brought to you in part by Feed NC, which was established in 1987 as the Mooresville Soup Kitchen. Feed NC stands for Food, Education, Essentials, and Dignity, and is a food-focused resource that seeks to end the cycle of hunger and poverty with extensive programs and opportunities for those in need. They served more than 1,700 people last year and currently serve an average of 150 families per week. Their services include regional markets, a food pantry, and workforce education. For more information and to donate, visit feednc.org. Or, of course, we've got the links to be able to donate in the comments section on the Facebook broadcast feed or on the YouTube page as well. Uh, and closing in now, we said it was over. Maybe it's not. Ten laps to go. Josh Weinrich's cut a quarter second out of it, Seth. But the problem is, inside ten to go, I mean, you got to be beyond perfect. You've got to be eating two-tenths or more a lap into it with the gap that he's got now in order to make it happen. And I just don't think Shane Terrian is going to be able to give, is going to give up that much. And in fact, he was faster last time by than Weinrich was. I think this is Terrian's race to lose. I guarantee you with less than 10 to go, both these drivers, they're driving desperate, but for different reasons. Josh Weinrich wants to see a caution, but Shane Therian desperately wants to see the white flag better than any flag in this race. Once we get to the white flag, this race will come back to checker no matter what. There's one attempt potentially at a green-white checker should the need arise. But with everybody strung out, barring a major mistake, the only battle right now that I see on track is for sixth place between Derek Newsom and the deuce of Neil Quick, who's had his struggles over the course of the night. But Quick has been kind of on the back bumper of Newsom and uh, just last time by actually made the pass. All that's happening, however, almost 18 seconds behind race leader Shane Terrian, who's coming by this time to take seven laps to go. We know that Darlington is one of those tracks that eats up tires. And we remember that Weinrich restarted back in the 10th position, had to pass a lot of cars to get up to where he is. I almost wonder if he used up all of his stuff too early trying to pass cars and now has nothing left for race leader Shane Tyrion. I could believe that theory because Weinrich, it seems like, has fallen off a cliff in the last five laps or so. He's now two-tenths a lap slower than Shane Terrian as we close in on the final six laps of racing here in the Feed NC 150 at the track. Too tough to tame. Terry and now 2.4 seconds clear. But the battle for third may not be over. If we've said it 10 times, we'll say it one more. Max McLaughlin versus Justin Gann for third. They have closed up together and maybe going to have one more scrap at it before this race ends. Now McLaughlin with the position will have the preferred line going into the corners, forcing Justin Gann to do something a little bit different. But Gann closes it up there out of turn four. Less than half a car length separating them. Now it opens up a little bit as McLaughlin got a better run off the final corner. But you kind of get the feeling that maybe the 30 might be just a little tick quicker from corner entry to the center. You get that feeling. McLaughlin better on the one and two end. And I think Gann is better in three and four inside of the final five laps. It'll be four to go when everybody gets back to the line. Gann sails it into turn number three, trying to get to the inside of McLaughlin. McLaughlin uses that high lane momentum to be able to hold him off. Four laps to go across the stripe. You're not missing anything up front. It's three seconds between Terry and Weinrich. These guys have been out there for 30, 30 laps on these tires. So you're seeing there the 30 of Gann trying to make a move to the inside, but he couldn't quite get the momentum because he doesn't quite have the grip now that he oh, had earlier. Oh, sideways! And that might open the door up high for Gann to make a move. He gets squeezed up towards the wall. And now McLaughlin may have overdriven the corner. Crossover. Here comes Gann to the inside for third. Side by side, they race off turn number four, back to the line. Three laps of racing to go as these two race for third. They have been tooth and nail all night long. McLaughlin holds him off as they work through one and two. Meanwhile, Tarion up front, running away. Gann pressuring one more time. The guy that's got the best seat in the house right now is Ricky Hart Jr. in that 28. He's a lap down, but he's getting to see these guys crossing each other over, trying to make moves for that third position as we're coming to the final few laps.
Two laps to go that time by across the stripe. One more time. McLaughlin holds Gann off. They head back to one. The leader going to see the white flag here in just a minute, but these two racing one more time through the corner. Theron enters into turn three. This battle coming out of turn two between McLaughlin and Gann. Do you wait till the final lap here if you're the 30 car? We'll have to wait and see. He's within closing distance, drives it deep into three. Gonna take it uh, deep one more time. Can't make it stick. Meanwhile, Shane Terrian has already crossed underneath the white flag and is getting ready to come off of uh, the corner. Shane Terrian working the final lap down the back straight away. It has been a dominant performance late for the driver of the road number 38. Toyota, a little tap to the wall in turn three, but no problem for Shane Terrian. Off turn four, Shane Terrian wins the feed NC 150. And Rick, after battling back from 10th on that restart, going to bring it home in the second position. It looks like there may have been a little bit of contact. Maybe Justin Gain got up into the wall. He loses out on third position battle with Max McLaughlin. McLaughlin will take the final spot on the podium. Yeah, Gann fell back almost a second on that final lap. So Max McLaughlin third, Josh Weinrich second. But how about the driver off the controller? Shane Terrian gets the job done, Seth, and shows them all, hey, you don't need a fancy wheel to go and win on the iRacing simulation platform. He puts on a clinic tonight down the stretch to win tonight's Feed NC 150. Absolutely. The top two cars were the two fastest cars on the track. It came down between those two in the closing stages, but we definitely saw that Shane Thierry in track position was key in this race. The gap he was able to open up over Josh Weinrich was just too much to overcome, and over three seconds was the gap that Thierry took the checkered flag here today as he gets ready to burn it down in front of these Darlington fans. Burning it down on the front straight away. Uh, the smoke show underway for the race winner. And you mentioned it earlier. I have to agree. Uh, but yeah, the the time that Weinrich and the cars that he had to pass, uh, I just feel like you're right. He burned up too much of his equipment uh, early on in that run, having to come from 10th after the damage didn't get repaired on that first uh, pit stop there with uh, 30 just over 30 laps to go, and I feel like that was the Achilles heel that ultimately did him in. Uh, Shane Tyrion continues to burn it down here on the front straightaway. Just under the flagman there might be uh, handing, getting handed that checkered flag. Let's look here at the finishing results for today's race, and obviously we know the fact of the top two, but I think maybe we can safely say the fun battle all race long was Max McLaughlin adjusting game, which usually was the battle for that third position. Very true. So Terrian gets the win by three seconds over Weinrich, as you mentioned, Seth. Max McLaughlin comes up in third, Justin Gann in fourth, and they were the show all race long. Tom Bourne from 30th gets a top five finish. Neil Quick comes home sixth tonight. Derek Newsom didn't call his name much, but comes from 31st all the way to seventh. Chris Hughes in eighth. Ninth, Stephen Tarando, another driver we didn't necessarily talk a lot about, but started 29th, worked his way up to a top 10 finish. He was the last car on the lead lap. Jay Crable finishes the top 10, the first car one lap down. Then the rest of the cars that finished this race were Ricky Hart Jr. in 11th. Austin Hill finished in 12th. And the last car to finish three laps down was Noah Valerio. Everybody else finished out of the race. Ryan Truex, who was up there in the top five late, had that issue off of turn two. He parked it and finishes in 14th. Ron Shute in 15th. Derek Krause, who had a strong car early on, finishes 16th. The rest of your top 20 pole sitter, Tommy Gossett, 17th. Paul Wilson, 18th. Bronson Stafford and David Grossclose, your top 20. 21st tonight was Mark Ellis, Harley White, 22nd, Tim Kuna, 23rd, Chris Owens, 24th, Michael Frisch, 25th, Matt Wishart finished 26th, 27th, went to Trevor Vogel, Kevin Bellacourt in 28th, Grayson Pope in 29th, Byron McDonald in 30th, Noah Turpak, Joe Zolo, Justin Wapham, the rest of the cars through 33 that took the green flag here tonight. A lot of drivers with early issues here. At Darlington, a lot of them did not bring out a caution, but the Lady in Black definitely played dividends into today's race all the way through these 110 laps. But the man who stands tall is Shane Tyrion. And let's see if we can get some interviews with our top three finishers. Let's start first here. 
see if we can uh, get a I, word. I can tell you, you won't get Max McLaughlin because he uh, broke a mic before the start of the race tonight. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, b big oof, Max said. But I know we can find Josh Weinrich, and I'm I'm going to be curious, like you said uh, a minute ago, uh, whether it was just burning up the tires too early. To get the answer to those questions, we'll get Josh Weinrich in here, finishing second today at Darlington. All hey, right, Josh, Jacob, Sam, and Seth up here in the Fly Racing Network studios. You got us. I got you guys. All right, PR guy. We all want to know. Uh, you had to restart tenth after the damage repair there uh, in the closing laps, and uh, was that just a case of having to burn your stuff up to get back to second to not really have anything there to charge with in the final lap? No, it was more of a case of uh, I was just kind of driving over my head uh, a couple corners there and just got the fence. Actually, smoked the fence over one and two, and uh, I felt like uh, I felt like me and the thirty eight were pretty even. So I knew if I I knew if I gave up that track position, it was going to be hard to hard to chase him down. But um, it was fun coming up through the pack. I'm just glad I got around Max and and uh, and Justin there getting sideways. Too exciting. Yeah, talk about that. I mean, you had a front row seat there. Jacob brought up the fact of maybe trying to pass them both into one corner. I don't think we expected it to happen quite that way, but that's exactly what happened. Yeah, they just kind of opened up the door there. I think Max got the fence. I mean, I saw Max was fighting it pretty hard, and I mean, we all know Max is a hard charger, so um, I knew those two guys were going to be pretty hard to... to... Uh, once I saw him go side by side into one, I kind of and uh, sure enough, the, the door opened. So uh, made it, it makes it a lot easier when you can pass two of them in, in one shot. Josh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, how much fun was it there in the latter stages of that race? Because there were a couple times where you had to work your way from pretty deep, uh, both early and late. Was it fun having to work through traffic or was it more work than it looked like? Yeah, it was fun working up through there. I mean, it's hard work. I'm sweating here. So, but uh, no, it, it was fun. We, um, it's cool when you get a group of guys like that. Uh, obviously, in an event like this, that you kind of get a lot of different guys. But uh, when you're racing there in traffic and you have people that kind of know how to race, especially at Darlington, you know, it's probably not a wise idea to contest spots in the corners. Um, so it's it, it, it's a lot of fun when you can race with guys that have uh, that have something between their ears and, and they know how. to race. So it was cool. And yeah. I know I've. I know, obviously, tonight a big night for Feed NC, and this is the second uh, charitable race that you guys at Tory Racing Enterprises have really put on. Uh, you know, how do you feel like the reception was for this one? It seemed like uh, all around the the turnout was great, and I know you guys have uh, have uh, done a good part in raising some money for the Feed NC program. Yeah, yeah, this was a, a lot of fun. Um, first of all, a, th a thank, huge thank you to everybody that up and, and race with us so um it, you know without everyone's participation I, I, um yeah feed nc you know they're based here in mooresville you know they provide food to so many different families and veterans and different individuals that are that need groceries need prepared meals so uh we figured as long as we're on iRacing during the um you know we might as well do some good with it so uh it was great uh, it was awesome having you guys at uh flat out racing network uh broadcast the deal so um cool to pretend like we're real race car drivers for uh, for an hour or so so it was fun um huge donated and uh, if anybody's interested in learning more about what feed nc does you can check them out on their website feednc.org josh i want to personally thank you from flat out racing network for reaching out to us and allowing us to be able to do this for you guys uh, unbelievable race and obviously as we pointed out this entire race racing for a great cause it was it was a pleasure to be a part of it Oh, thank you guys for covering. Hopefully, hopefully everybody had some fun racing with us. Obviously, thanks to Austin, Max, uh, Derek Krause, our old buddy Ryan Truex, and, and Mike. Come, uh, it's, it's cool to have their participation and everything, and hopefully it makes it fun for everybody else involved. Absolutely. Well, that's Josh Weinrich. He brings it home second here tonight at Darlington. A great performance for you here today. You start second, you finish second. And again, uh, thank you a whole lot for this opportunity. That was fun. Thank you guys for... For uh, putting it online. Hopefully. Sorry, I moved you out too soon. No, that's all good. No, it was fun. Uh, it was fun having you guys broadcast and, and uh, just hopefully everybody out there that watched had, had fun, got a good chuckle at times of everybody knocking the fence down. So uh, hopefully we'll 
be able to do it again here sometime soon. All right, and that's Josh Weinrich brings it home second place here today. And let's get our race winner in here, Shane Terrian. Shane, it's Jacob at Setup here in the Fly Race Network Studios. You got us? I got you. All right, Shane. So uh, I, I, the first thing I want to know is uh, everybody was fussing be, uh, that you couldn't win because you're the only one working on a controller as uh, as opposed to a proper setup. But you uh, <laughs> took everybody to school in the latter stages of that race. Yeah, I see a lot of people hate on controller drivers. They're saying that we're chaos. You know, we can't hold a line. We can't race clean. Um, well, here I am with Xfinity drivers and ARCA drivers, and I won. So <laughs> I hope that puts it a little bit to sleep. I'm curious from from that standpoint, uh, why why the choice of a controller over a traditional wheel? Is that just personal preference? Or? Uh, no. When I first got into i racing, I was in the I had just joined the Navy, so I couldn't really lug a wheel around because I was constantly traveling. So I just seven years ago I started on a controller, got really good at it, used to it, um, and just went from there. I mean, I have a wheel now, just don't have a proper setup to to use it and get get a nice comfortable feel. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm Still quick on a controller, just not consistent. I mean, a, a wheel. I mean, what you know for you? What was that race like? Uh, being able to uh, really run away down the stretch. I know uh, Weinrich was your competition for the longest time, and it just looked like uh, him having to come from tenth there after that final round of pit stops. You were able to really pull away and build a nice gap. Yeah, I don't know. I like, um, I did a league in these cars a while back, and I could not save tires in, in this build with these cars. And then when I came here, I was like, I'm just going to take it easy, you know, just come out of the top five. And all of a sudden, I started reeling in, you know, the 80 and the 84, and then I passed the 84 in the green. I was like, okay, I have something here. And it, I, the, the track was tough. It was tight. Uh, I've never had to break entering one before, so that was weird. But uh, this was this was really fun. It was tight, but it was really, really fun. You know, Shane, we saw at certain points of that race, even though you were out in front, you still got yourself a couple of Darlington stripes. How difficult, even when you're the race leader, is it to stay mentally focused attacking those corners since one and two is entirely different configuration than three and four? It's tough here. I mean, I've always been I've always been good at Darlington, mainly because of, you know, that aspect. Uh, but I, I, I'm lucky I only hit the wall maybe twice. I hit the wall pretty hard on the last lap. That was my first that time actually ramming it because I was like already excited because I knew I won but this 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 track is definitely mentally tough it's 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 hard because you it's you got turn one and two which are really fast sometimes you don't have to let off entering it and then you get turn three where you have to break hard so you don't slam into the wall on entry or get it off uh the corner so it's it's a, it's a difficult track but it's really fun to drive when you get the hang of it but you certainly conquered it here today and now we're gonna let you do some shout outs here after your victory at Darlington yeah, I want to shout out Evil Controllers. Uh, I didn't run their primary paint scheme tonight. Uh, I'm running Rogue Energy because I have a league race tomorrow, so I'm running them. Uh, thanks to them for coming on board last year. Uh, you guys are broadcasting. Uh, I love when you guys broadcast. Um, of course, my family watched. I saw them commenting on the thing, so shout out to them. And my team, Sky Motorsports teammates with Bronson and Tom here tonight. Tom got a top five. Bronson, unfortunately, got caught up in a bunch of wrecks. But, uh, you know, and then shout out to Tori Racing for, for doing this. This was really fun. It was really cool. And Therian brings it home with the victory here today. Congratulations. Go enjoy it. Thank you. Jacob, you mentioned the fact that uh, Max McLaughlin having some mic issues, but how about we bring in the guy that probably saw more of McLaughlin this entire race, our fourth place finisher, Justin Gann. Absolutely. I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Uh, one of those where uh, he was the show. Justin Gann, Jacob Seelman, Seth Cole in the uh, flat out booth. You got a copy? I got you. You were the show, my friend. Uh, you and Max absolutely put on a whale of a battle there for, it seemed like, about 100 laps of that race. Uh, you two could not get away from one another. How much fun was that? And I know he eventually got the better of you, but uh, you certainly gave it a, a couple of shots there in those last couple of laps to get back by. Oh, yeah. He was tough to to try to get around. Uh, seems like uh, every, every time we went into the pits, I, I could beat him out of the pits, but he beat me into turn one. And, uh, you know, I just, it, it, he was tough, man. It, it was a blast. Saw you guys actually lean on each other a couple of times. I mean, is this one of those types of tracks going to the corner? You can do that and get away with it? Or was that testing the waters a little? 
Oh, that's definitely pushing it. Uh, any kind of contact you've seen, I think it was uh, around 10 to go or so. I got sideways when we got into each other and somehow I saved it. But uh, yeah, we definitely don't want to make contact in those terms. Saw that uh, you and McLaughlin kept kind of uh, trying to cross each other over. Was there a preferred area to be able to make a pass on somebody here? Because we saw a lot of times drivers would make a move into a corner, but they just couldn't seem to get the momentum through the center off. Did you experience that? Or was there any place where a uh, drive in deep was actually able to work? Yeah, I would try to drive in and turn one as long as I could get, you know, a half a car length on them on the front stretch. But, uh, other than that, you, you know, that, that was the ideal place to pass. Uh, sometimes you could slide up, you could slide under them and slide up in turn three, but that was a, that's an iffy move right there because they'll have that momentum and they can get into the back of you. Obviously a tremendous job by you keeping that car straight, as you mentioned, after the contact between uh, you and McLaughlin, you bring it home in the fourth position, a solid outing for you. I don't think your car fell out of the top five pretty much the entire day. Uh, we're going to let you do some shout outs here now. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank HRE for, uh, putting this on, man. It was a blast. And, uh, uh, you know, I run with Ron in a, in, uh, in a league and he, he showed me, uh, he showed me the link for this and I'm glad he did. Uh, it's always good to donate to, to a good cause. So, uh, I had a blast and, uh, hopefully some people benefit from it. All right. Well, congratulations on your fourth place finish. A tremendous battle, as we said, all race long between you and McLaughlin. Uh, thanks for taking part in it. And obviously, congratulations on a top five run at one of the toughest tracks out there in Darlington. Yeah, thank you for what you guys uh, did tonight. Appreciate it. That's going to conclude our coverage here tonight. And uh, I want to also give like a personal thank you here to Jacob Seelman for uh Join us here in the commentators booth here tonight. Definitely added a lot to this, uh, a lot of information that I didn't know. And, and Jacob, it was a pleasure having you. Absolutely, Seth. A pleasure to be here. Obviously, the first time working with you guys, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, you know, it makes our job as commentators easy when the guys out on the racetrack, real or virtual, can put on a great show. And I feel like we saw that tonight as well as we're able to raise some money for a really great cause. So, again, thanks to Josh Weinrich, uh, Max McLaughlin, Austin Hill, all the folks at Hattori Racing Enterprises that came together to put this deal on that invited me to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, thank you, Sam and Max for uh, welcoming me up into the booth tonight and uh, you know giving me a place to call some racing for a little bit. Uh, like I said, it was a lot of fun, and I uh, hope we get a chance to do it again sometime. Absolutely, and as always, Sam, great to have you here in the booth as well. Always a pleasure. So for Sam Dyer, Jacob Seelman, I'm Seth Cole. Again, big time thank you to Hattori Racing Enterprises for uh, putting this event on, for asking us to do it, and of course as well, you know, you guys can still go to feednc.com and donate there. Uh, the links will continue to be in the uh, video description here on YouTube. It will also continue to be in the comments for the Facebook Live video. So head on over and donate what you can. A great race for a great cause. And that concludes our coverage here tonight for the Feed NC 150 at Darlington presented by Hattori Racing Enterprises. Once again, for Sam and Jacob, I'm Seth. We'll see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast on the Flat Out Racing Network.